We are in chapter five, introduction to solutions and aqueous reactions. And the quote here is from Karl Popper, science may be described as the art of systematic oversimplification, the art of discerning what we may with advantage omit. There are a lot of things that we omit in Chem 1A because if we included all the details, we'd never get through it. And that's true in other areas too. There's places where you're like, well, yes, we know this thing exists, but it's not significant here. And so we're gonna leave it out. We're gonna oversimplify. So this is section 5.2. I can't remember what was in 5.1. I'm sure I skipped it for a reason. I would encourage you to read it but I won't test you on anything from it. So solution concentrations. Um, chemical reactions often happen between reactants that are in an aqueous solution, dissolved in water. And by solution, we mean a homogeneous mixture of two substances. So this might be salt and water or sugar and water, and that is called a solution. A solution is composed of two parts. Um, there's solution. The solvent, um, the simplest way to explain it is that's what there's more of. And the solute is what there's less of. Um, there's only one solvent, but there can be more than one solute. If the solvent is water, then we call it an aqueous solution. And that is by far the most common, especially in general chemistry. Any questions? So it's kind of a mouthful. Solution, solvent, solute, they all start with sol and it's easy to get them confused, but we just, I'll do my best to say the right word and you do your best to hear the correct word. So we can, because this is a mixture, we can have different amounts of solute in the solvent. We could have a lot or a little bit. And we can describe those in qualitative terms without numbers as a dilute solution or a concentrated solution. Where in a dilute solution, there's not very much solute. In a concentrated, there's a large amount of solute. So, I think most people have seen the frozen orange juice they sell at the grocery store in the little can, right? It's concentrated, right? Do you drink it out of the can? No. You put it in a pitcher and you add water to it, right? It is too concentrated. They made it that way by taking water out of it. And so you turn it back into good orange juice by adding the water back in. So it's frozen concentrate. We need a quantitative way to express solution concentration, and the most convenient one in chemistry is called molarity. And it's abbreviated with a capital M. There are a lot of M's for symbols. We've got lowercase m and capital M, and then we've got Greek M's, and there's M's all over the place. So part of this is context. But molarity is defined this way. It's the amount of solute measured in moles divided by the volume of the entire solution measured in liters. And it has to be those units. So the units of molarity are moles per liter. And the capital M is just short for moles per liter. Here is an illustration showing how you would make a solution of a particular concentration. Here we're making a one molar sodium chloride solution. So one molar means one mole per liter of solution. We're using a one liter flask, so we need one mole of sodium chloride. So the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44, so we weigh out the mass of one mole and we add it to this flask. This flask is specially designed to measure the quantity, the volume of the solution precisely, and it'll have a mark on the neck. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add some water and we're not gonna fill it up all the way. 
we're just going to fill it up to kind of the shoulders of the flask here so that there's enough space that we can agitate it and get the salt to dissolve. Otherwise, it just doesn't work very well. Once you get all your salt dissolved, then you can add water up to the mark and then you put a stopper in it and you stick your thumb on it so it doesn't fall out and then you turn the flask upside down. And we'll be doing this, not with a one liter flask, but with some cute little ones in, a, in an upcoming experiment. That's a good question. It looks like they're adding, adding extra water. They aren't though. The, the one liter mark is right up here. So this was not full yet. Oh, okay. And so once you get it dissolved, then you top it off. Yeah. And the reason the neck is so skinny is because then you can easily see a difference in volume. Like if you add one drop, you'll notice that meniscus goes up or if you're a little too low, so you can measure much more precisely. Do you remember when we were measuring 10 milliliters of water in the beaker, right? And you think it's there and you pour a little more in and you're like, didn't, didn't look like it moved at all, right? Because it was a big area. So volumetric glassware is usually got a narrow part. So how many moles of solute, that's the stuff that's dissolved, are needed to make three liters of a two molar solution? Anytime you see this capital M, you should write it as two moles per liter because otherwise your brain will think it's something else and everything will be harder. So I wanna make three liters of a two molar solution how much solute do I need? Six. Six moles, right? Because for one liter, I need two. For two liters, I'd need four. And for three, I'd need six. This is math we can just do in our head, but actually what we're doing there is dimensional analysis. Let's calculate the molarity of a solution made by adding 45.4 grams of sodium nitrate to a, to a flask and dissolving it with water to create a total volume of 2.50 liters. So let's analyze what they're giving us. Um, the numbers are generally important. 45.4 grams of sodium nitrate and 2.50 liters, and what are they asking us to find? Molarity. So there's no question word here, but there's a command. Calculate. Do it now. Calculate. So it's always a good idea, and you know, if you don't have colored highlighters, just underline them or circle them but identify what's given to you in the problem and what you're trying to find. Because if you don't know where you're starting or you don't know where you're going, you will get lost, right? So I've, I've been given two numbers here. And um, I think my brain got melted on the walk in from the car. And so we're trying to calculate the molarity. What is molarity? It's moles over liters, right? So we want moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So this is a little bit like density. If you are calculating the density, you have to use the equation, right? It's the mass divided by the volume. Here, if you're calculating the molarity, you're gonna use this. So we want moles of solution, I'm sorry, moles of solute and liters of solution. Well, what's this? That's the volume in liters of the solution, right? 
I didn't think out, think this out very well. So 2.50 liters, that's nice. Did they give us the moles? No, they gave us mass. At least they were nice and gave us the formula. So we need to go from grams to moles. And what is the magic conversion factor there? The molar mass, right? So um, I really encourage you just, you know, in the corner somewhere, jot down the things that you're adding together. I was grading worksheets and I noticed some people made a lot of mistakes on the molar mass. And the rest of the question was hard and they got that right, but they did the molar mass wrong. Um, write it down, double check it. So sodium is 22.99 and I've got one nitrogen and I've got three oxygens. It's, it's also important to make sure that you're looking at the correct letter uh, up there because, you know, if you get N and NA mixed up, um, your molar mass isn't going to be good. So this says 85. How many significant figures should that number have? Should it have? Should have four. I'm using four in all the other molar masses. So this 85 is not plus or minus one. This is 85.00 grams. So I will take my mass And this is my path. I was talking to a student last night. It was a, it was a longer path, but he was doing it in separate pieces. And he was getting confused. And I said, please, let's just follow the path. And so we started. And I got him to follow the path. And by the end, he said, oh, that's much easier. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> so please, give it a shot. Grams to moles. Those are the units on the top, grams to moles. And then this unit comes down here. Oops. We get all the units in first before you start putting the numbers in. It's tempting to put the numbers in, get the units straight. So this is the mass in grams of one mole. 85.0. So we have 45.4 divided by 85. And how many sig figs should this number have? Three. So there's three. And I'm going to write down two more. And that's moles. 0 0.5341.2 moles. So we'll divide by 2.5, 2 2.50, and we should still have three sig figs. As a final answer, that's 0.214 moles per liter, or you can write it 0 0.214 capital M. Yes? When you do the molar mass, is it the unit, is it grams or grams per liter? Um, the, the way I'm doing it is I'm saying that is grams and that is equal to one mole which really is the same thing. So it's okay if you write it G over MOL? Yes, you can, write, you can write the molar mass, and sometimes it'll be given to you, and it'll be, like if it's typed out, it'll be like that. But you don't want to put this sideways fraction into your work, because what I see happen a lot is people will take this 
and they'll they'll stick it down here and not realize that things are not canceling the way they want want it to so you should always write this as a vertical fraction which would be like this oops writing with an eraser when will i learn so it's grams over moles when you're doing dimensional analysis everything should be vertical fractions okay any questions So molarity is a very useful conversion factor. Um, we can go between moles of solute and liters of the solution. And here's an example. Um, a 0 0.500 molar solution, that means it's 0 0.500 moles of sodium chloride for every liter of solution. So we can write that like this or like this. So we can convert from liters to moles or from moles to liters. And just like with density, we're not gonna go back and use an equation and rearrange it and make our brains hurt. Just use it like grams per mole, right? Like molar mass, it's moles per liter. So how many grams of sucrose are in 1.55 liters of 0.758 molar sucrose solution? Sucrose is sugar. So let's highlight the numbers. That's what's given. Maybe include sucrose in there. And what am I looking for? Grams, grams of sucrose. How many grams of sucrose? This is not asking me to calculate a molarity. So this is just going to be dimensional analysis. So I'm going to take my given things and write them down on the left. 1.55 liters, 0 0.758. That's a capital M. Write it as moles over liters so that you remind yourself that is a fraction there. And then we're trying to get to grams of sucrose. Well, the first thing we have to do is decide which of these numbers do we start with, right? Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it isn't. This is a per unit moles per liter. That's almost never the starting number. That's a conversion factor. So this is the one we want to start with. So there we've got 1.55 liters, and we're trying to get to grams of sucrose. How can we get there? I think I heard someone say moles. Yeah, so anytime you go to pass like this and you're like, I don't know where this is going to go, try moles. Moles usually ends up there somewhere. So can I convert liters of solution to moles of sucrose? Yeah, that's what the molar mass does. I mean, the molarity does. This is moles of sucrose per liter of solution. Can I convert moles of sucrose to grams of sucrose? Yeah, I just need to calculate the molar mass. But they gave me the formula, so I can do that. So there's my path. 1.55 liters times and a line times and a line. Two arrows, two factors. This is moles. leave enough space let's make that one longer so you know this is like Dora with her map right liters to moles to grams liters to moles to grams I'm gonna take the first unit and divide by it because I'm trying to cancel out all the units except the last one So where does the 0.758 go? Yeah. 
it goes goes here with <laughs> I know what you meant with moles of sucrose because this is moles per liter right and then it's like well yeah you didn't even leave close to enough room we'll just do that 0 0.758 still really not quite big enough and then this is going to be the molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of a mole. So 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.008 plus 11 times 16.00. something wrong. I accidentally did uh, 12 divided by 12.01. That's better. 342.296. This is the mass of one mole. So this goes here with the gram. 342.296. So 1.55 times 0.758 times, bless you, gives us 402. Should have three sig figs, 402.16. grams and so the final answer would be 402 grams of sucrose that's a lot of sugar mm. tastes real good though any questions using molarity as a conversion factor is one of those things that we do a lot in chemistry, so it's really important. If we dissolve 25 grams of salt in 251 grams of water, what is the mass of the resulting solution? Yeah, you just add them together, right? So I have water and I add salt, nothing happens to their masses. They, they're both there, right? This question threw me for a loop last night because you know your brain's like doing molarity and stuff and you're like, oh, I need to calculate a molar mass and then you're like, wait a minute, what? And this is one of those ones that's just too easy. Um, so you know, we could also do process of elimination. Well, it can't be 251 because that's just the water, right? And it can't be 226, because adding salt is not going to make water weigh less. All right, it can't be that one. The masses just add together. We often keep solutions in, in a concentrated form. And this has become a lot more common with like household chemicals as well. You, know, you have your spray bottle. Like we have these spray bottles of Simple Green. Well, we buy it in concentrated form, right? And then you pour a little bit in the bottle and add a bunch of water. You dilute it. And so that's what we do as well. They're called stock solutions, and we keep them in the stock room, strangely enough. So you take some of the stock solution, the more concentrated, you put it in a container, you add more solvent, just like mixing up Simple Green in a spray bottle. The amount of the solute doesn't change when you do that, right? Only the volume of the solution changes. So that means that the concentrations and volumes are inversely proportional, or it gives us this little equation 
that students like maybe a little too much. You can only use this for dilution, okay? Nothing else. It's just for diluting a solution. And I don't care if a tutor tells you to. You just tell them right back, Mrs. K said no. Because, yeah, it's not good. Um, so, so how does this work? Well, what are the units of the capital M? Moles over liters. And what are the units of capital V? The volume? Yes. Could be liters. So when we take the molarity and multiply by the volume, we get the moles of the solute. So that's where you get this one. And the second one is equal to it. The second one is equal to the new molarity times the new volume. Here's an example of diluting a solution. Um, you've got 1.5 liters of a 10 molar stock solution that they're pouring into a flask. So that's 10 moles per liter times 0.15 liters. So that's a total of 1.5 moles of solute. And then they're adding water up to the mark, three liters. So three liters is the new volume, and that means the new concentration is 0.5. So the concentration goes down when you add water. Any questions? To what volume in milliliters should you dilute 100 milliliters of a 5 molar calcium chloride solution to obtain a 0.75 molar calcium chloride solution? So there's the word dilute. We can use the dilution equation. The other thing to notice is we're starting with calcium chloride and we're ending with calcium chloride. There's no chemical reaction going on here. So let's highlight what we're given. got a volume and two concentrations and what do they want? They want the volume in milliliters. So we can take that equation M1V1 is equal to M2V2. And it really doesn't matter which one you call one and which one you call two. I typically um, call the solution that you're starting with one and the solution I'm going to two. So let's think about what these guys are. A hundred milliliters of this, those two go together, right? What we really don't want to happen is we don't want to swap partners here because then we end up with the wrong answer. So I'm going to call this one V1 and I'm going to call this one M1. Those are the same solution. And then this guy, that's going to be M2 and this volume that we're looking for is V2. So I'm looking for V2. I need to rearrange the equation. And we will be doing a fair amount of rearranging simple equations. So if you're rusty on it, please come talk to me and we'll go over it until you remember. So I need to rearrange the equation to get, get everything to the other side except V2. Yes? Do we have to, do we have to convert milliliters to liters? That's a good question. Do we have to convert milliliters to liters? We'll find out. The answer is no. Um, so to get rid of M2, I'm going to divide this side by M2 because M2 divided by M2 is 1. It cancels out. In order for this to remain equal, I have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So I'll divide that by M2. And now that's kind of a mess, so I'm going to rewrite it. V2 equals M1, V1 over M2. It is so easy to mix up the ones and twos. So go back and look. M1, V1, M1, V1, divided by M2 equals V2. Okay. 
Now I've got my numbers identified and I can put them into the equation. So the first one is M1, which is 5.00 moles per liter. Even write it as a vertical fraction there times that volume, 100 milliliters. If that's all we were doing, milliliters wouldn't cancel liters. But we're going to divide by M2, 0 0.750 moles over liters. The moles per liter in the numerator and the moles per liter in the denominator cancel each other. So that leaves us with units of milliliters, which is actually what it asks you for. So in these problems, um, the volumes need to be in the same unit, but it doesn't matter which unit they are. Well. No, that, that's true, actually. So what do we have here? 5 times 100 divided by 0.75. Anyone else think that's a scary number? <laughs> Satan called. He wants his weather back. <laughs> I just couldn't resist, sorry. Um, should have three sig figs, so 667 milliliters. Any questions? Six sixty-seven. 